welcome back to my channel. Today I will be painting this photo I found on Petzl's and I also want to take this time to talk about how I start to approach a difficult piece. I always get asked about this especially when I'm using a reference photo so that's what we're going to be doing today. I will be painting with my gouache and, and the paints that I'm using will be my Holbein artist gouache. So the first thing I do when I start to approach a piece that I know is going to be difficult or hard for me to even start is to figure out what my goals are for the piece. And usually this is based on the reference photo. These are things that drew me to the photo and and things that I want to capture in my final piece. So this is really important. I think sometimes my course of action might change as I'm painting but very rarely do my goals for the piece change. Usually my techniques would change to accommodate my goals, my the overall vision will remain the same. And they will be what leads me throughout the whole process. For this one, what really drew me to the photo was the lighting and the colors and especially the darkness in the scene I wanted the values in my painting to reflect that so the first goal is to make the painting look dark but still make it apparent that the model is kind of pale and so it's just the lighting that is dark so that's the first thing that I think is going to be hard And the second goal that I have for this piece is to just capture the cool atmosphere with the colors that I choose. The next one is kind of a minor goal, but it is to make sure that I set aside the same amount of time that I did for her face for when I paint the flowers. And it's not, I don't really want to make sure that the flowers are perfect because I think that I know my limitations and so I just really want to force myself to at least give it the same amount of effort that I did for her face. So those are my goals for this piece and now that I have those, the second thing I do is to figure out the course of action. Usually this is led by the medium that I'm using. So with watercolors you have to be very precise and methodical I think in your process they sort of have to go a certain way since for this one i used gouache and i had the option to go from light to dark there are more ways that i can go about this and if i had used watercolors and so that's what i'm doing and usually when i'm talking about planning it's just mentally it's not super strict i just want to visualize how the process will go before i start so for this one, I really wanted to go dark to light and mostly just that's just because I have been seeing a lot of painting videos where they always paint the darkest things first and then layer the lighter colors on top of that. So I thought it would be really fun to do that, especially with the flowers. I think it would be a good way to show depth if I showed the background flowers first and then build myself up to the closer, the closest flowers and so they're the flowers that are hit more by the light. Um, so, so that's what I plan to do with the background and with the flowers. But other than that, because it is squash, I also had to plan out my consistencies with my paint. So what I did was just start out with a very light wash of colors almost like watercolors and I just wanted to figure out uh, what kind of colors that I wanted to reflect the values. And so I did that and I kept my and I and always I had my goals in mind. So the next thing that I wanted to plan out were my colors because that is one of my main goals for this piece. And for this one I actually chose two sets of complementary colors. And the main reason for that is because I really wanted 
to maintain the cool atmosphere and so I chose purple and green and for those colors to work I needed to have their opposite colors to sort of ground them. So it's purple and it's complementary color yellow or it's opposite color yellow and then I also have green with its opposite color red. And so that's what I did initially, I just tried to see if these colors would work together and since I think that they did, that's what I went with. I really liked how I could use just the, the opposite colors to, to neutralize each other and I didn't have to use black until the very end when I really needed to have the darkest values that I could find. So I think it was really fun using these two, these two sets of complementary colors. Usually I would actually only have one and that would and I would build my colors around those two colors. And for this one, it's just really fun to play around with more colors than I normally would. Especially using the purple, I think recently the role that the purple plays in my paintings have been replaced by green. So I haven't really used it that much and I think so that this might be the coolest looking colors in my most recent paintings. And then once I had my colors planned and my values planned, it was then time to, for me to use a thicker paint. I think I did have a little bit of trouble getting to my first goal, which is to, to still make sure that the model looks pale on this very dark atmosphere. I think I was either making her look too purple or just end up making her look stand out too much from the rest of the lighting. So I had to go over that a couple of times, so that was really frustrating, but it's a good thing that I started with her hair because those values I'm really sure of and so I know to just build the rest of the painting in reference to the colors and the values that I had for her hair. So sometimes when her skin would look too pale against the hair, I would just bring it back down with darker colors and then do the opposite if the opposite shows. But Good that it was a good thing that I had that hair color established first to sort of build the painting around that. But since I did have a lot of mistakes here, I also want to talk about how I approach these kinds of hiccups. And the first thing is actually really simple and it's to spend time away from my painting. Sometimes it just helps to not focus so much on one area and, and see painting as a whole so you can so you can see if you're in the right place values wise and with the colors so what i do sometimes is actually actually just take a walk or maybe watch a youtube video before i go back into the drawing but i also found a good idea to take photos of your painting and where it's at if you have a camera that's even better because it's just would capture your values more. I would also caution using your iPhones if you guys are using that because these things are so frustratingly <laughs> annoying when it comes to capturing paintings because it lightens up the values and it sort of makes it look I guess more accessible for normal photos but for paintings when you're trying to maintain the values it gets really frustrating. And not only that, it also adjusts the color temperature to something very warm, so that's really frustrating, especially for this piece where I wanted it to be really cool. And also just in the right way, not too cool, because if I'm looking at it from a warm perspective, I would accidentally make the painting too cool, so 
I really needed to have a good grasp of where it is. So uh, since taking photos of it with my iPhone wasn't working, I just I just went and get a coffee before I went back to it and was finally able to see where I was at with the painting. Another good idea I think is that to actually take a photo of it and then blur it out so you can really force yourself to see the overall composition and values are there without being distracted by the details. Another thing is when you're already at the stage where it might be hard to adjust some things and this works especially for gouache because it is a medium that's very temperamental, so so you can just layer and layer over it without without consequences. So it sort of has this limit to the layers that you can have because if it gets too thick, I heard it, that it could actually crack. So and even if you master, you have mastered the consistencies, there is just a limit to the amount of layers that you can add. So I think a good thing actually is to plan your corrections out digitally. So this is where I had the painting at, where I was just doubting where I wanted to go after this point. So what I did was take a photo of it and then do my corrections digitally first to see if the composition works before I do it on my actual painting. I love doing this on Clip Studio Paint because you, there's more adjustments that you can do on the photo to make it look more accurate versus Procreate. But if you want to test out a quick fix first, then you can absolutely just do this on Procreate. But I found that planning your corrections digitally really cuts down a lot of the back and forth when you're in this stage of the painting where preserving the amount of layers you have is crucial so it was really nice to have that and I think after I planned that on, I planned those things digitally, now I have a good guide of where to take the piece and so I was able to finally finish it with the guidance of digitally or altered image but yeah. After that, it was just smooth sailing. Despite me talking so much throughout this whole process, I really had so much fun painting this. I This one didn't take as long to finish as I thought it would. It was actually just really fun, especially trying new techniques and colors that I haven't used in a while. So this was just a really calming painting once again, just like the, the last one that I had. So. That is it for this video. I will actually be uploading a bonus video on my Patreon, so if you guys are supporting me there, thank you so much and thank you for watching this one if you are. But yeah, thank you everybody else for watching this video and I will be seeing you guys again soon.